Hi, this is Dr. Terrence Bradshaw from the University of Vermont Plant and Soil Science Department and UVM Extension. I'm going to explain using the USDA Web Soil Survey application to evaluate a piece of farmland for basic soil characteristics. Here we have a standard Google search Web Soil Survey. I just wanted to highlight the URL for this Web Soil Survey dot nrcs dot usda dot gov and if we click on that we see that the actual url that it takes you to is a little bit more complicated and that's why i showed the uh, quicker url to find this database utilizes the soil survey maps that have been collected for decades uh, for most every county in the united states uh, so odds are very, very great that the data will be available for your particular uh, site. So you get to the main site. Um, aside from getting to all the other soils information you can find uh, through the NRCS, you can start the web soil survey application. And this will open up a separate application, bring you to a map of the US, and will allow you to drill down to uh, the particular piece of land that you want to evaluate. As we drill down to this, it's helpful for us to select an area that's um, you know, 50 to 200 acres. Um, you could do a little bit more, but the data starts to um, lose granularity. It's also important to recognize that these soil maps did, were, were developed, but not by uh, necessarily uh, collecting data on every single field in the United States. So this is an important way to gain kind of a landscape level sense of the soil qualities, uh, but you still need to uh, dig down and do your own assessment of the particular soil on a site. So to get down to the particular site we wanna look at, the best thing to do is to look at this quick navigation bar. And if you know the address or an address nearby, um, that's the quickest way I've found to get there. But you can search by latitude and longitude, uh, you know, state and county. If you know the particular soil survey book that you'd be looking in, um, you can look through that. But I always just go to the address. And you can see that I've started to enter the University of Vermont Horticulture Research and Education Center address. And we'll use this as our example. And we just hit view. I've found that it's not super case sensitive. Um, so it, you could say Green Mountain DR, and it will most likely bring you here. Uh, but it, it's brought us to this particular site. Now, it's important. We're now going to work within this window where my cursor is. Uh, so it's important to, to scroll down until you can see most of the window. Um, it, this is something where sometimes it helps to have a second monitor or a larger monitor to work with. But I'm doing this on a laptop screen, and, and we'll, we should be able to work just fine. So you can see the, our farm surrounded by condos and, and commercial development in suburbia. Um, our farm is this undeveloped section, uh, or that uh, agricultural undeveloped section. There's some woods to the south of us. And I want to drill down further, and I want to select something called an area of interest. And we need to define an area of interest in order to uh, tell the database where we want to uh, find soil data. So if I want to look on this entire property, what I'll do is I will come and I'll make this a little bit bigger. Um, so we can see this better. One thing is important to recognize is by default, we're on the magnifier view. So if I tap anywhere on this map, it's going to zoom in, um, and sometimes that can sort of get you get you off base and get the map off of where you where you wanted, uh, especially if you zoom in or zoom out on a on a corner away from where you're looking. Um, and so sometimes it helps to just go back and go back to your your search, and that'll bring you back to your centered spot that you were you were looking for. It'll highlight the county that we're in. So it, it, this is showing you that this is looking within the Chittenden County Soil Survey. And then we can do a few things. Like if you need to move the map a little bit uh, to maybe to center it within the box, you can do that with this hand. Uh, I'm not gonna use all of these because I don't always use all these. The main thing that I wanna show is 
defining your area of interest. Now you can define it by um, either a polygon where you make up a space. I often just select a rectangle that covers all the land and it doesn't matter if you go a little bit outside of what you're looking for. This is gonna be about 150 acres, 100 and, yeah, probably 150, 130 acres. And I select that space and what will come up is this hash marked section of the map. So I just uh, uh, defined my unit within this. I guess it's 240 acres, a little bit more than I thought. Okay, now that I've done that, um, what I, I have not used the import or export functions. I know you can uh, take this data and export it and then work with it outside of the uh, survey, but I have never done so. Um, and that's beyond the scope of this quick tutorial. So I've highlighted that area of interest. And now I'm, what my, my main question is, what's the soil? What's the underlying soil type within this area? So now I move up and I move over to a different tab. And this is where I wanna to go to my soil map. And now within that particular window, you can see the different soil map units or soil type units uh, that are on this property. So I can see, and now I can zoom in if I want to. So if I want to look at the front fields in particular, now I'm going to need to, oh, sorry, I zoomed out. If I'm on the zoom in, if I've clicked the zoom in button, I can just select the rectangle. Now I'm going back in, I'm, I'm working within the soil uh, uh, layer. And you can see that I have, for the majority of the production fields of our farm, um, we are on ADA. You can see that ADA there, ADA there. And in between, ADB, and there's a little bit of a different type of soil, and I'll show that. But you can see all these different soil units. Now, where the, where the delineations lie does not mean that's exactly where the soil types will lie, but it's often, uh, you can often see when you, uh, when you look at a map, you can see how, how uh, development changes based upon the soil type. And that's often because a slope changes or, or a site is wetter or something like that. So you can see under LF, which is, I need to keep going down. Limerick silt loam very wet, that's actually where there's a stream that runs through the property. Um, and so you're looking at the riparian area. But on either side of that is the Adams A um, and the A, the last letter typically refers to the slope, um, slope range. Um, so we have fairly flat Adams and Windsor loamy sand soil that's separated by a waterway. You can also see in the back part of the farm, we have DBB, Duane and Deerfield soil. So a slightly different soil type. So that's important to know um, if you're deciding whether or not to put a, a planting uh, here versus here, um, I would get out and actually walk the site and see what the difference is. I know the difference between ADA and ADB is the slope. And as someone who knows this site quite well, I can actually say that the slope in this section where our lilacs are planted really isn't that different from here. It doesn't really start sloping off until about here. So that's why it's important to get out and, and walk the site um, and to, to do a site check um, in, in the real world as well. So once I know that, what does that tell me about the characteristics of the soil? This is where uh, the soil survey, web soil survey, uh, is a little more powerful. We'll zoom back out. Uh, because before you'd have to, you'd have this site, you'd look at the map at this on a literal paper map uh, that folded out of this, this big bound book. And then you'd have to leave that map, go back to the, to the index or to the section where uh, the different uh, units were, were identified and then look at that. Whereas here I can just click on it and it will bring up the description of that particular piece. Um, now, and Adams and Windsor Loamy Sands are located all over the state. Um, and so there's gonna be different characteristics, right? The frost-free period will be 90 to 180 days. That's a pretty broad range. Elevation, 90 to 1200 feet, pretty broad range. 
Um, but some of the most important things that I look from here, look at from here, um, farmland classification. So this is considered a farmland of statewide importance. That tells me that, that uh, there's certain characteristics that will lend itself to successful uh, farm operations on this particular site. Um, we can look a little bit at um, how the the settings are developed. This is uh, usually is, is um, the, the soils that are on the Adams Windsor loamy sand typically our uh, lake bed or actually lake shore terraces uh, from these sandy uh, deposits. But the important things I like to look at is the typical profile. And what this will tell me is um, how far down I go before I start to run into ledge or um, you know, a uh, restrictive feature that would impede water flow, which is especially important uh, with the crops that I work in uh, apples and grapes where you need to have well-drained soil. So we can keep looking down. We see this is typically not a, a highly sloped uh, field, um, but that typically the depth to a restrictive feature um, is more than 80 inches. And in fact, we recently dug uh, 16 feet down on this soil and still we're in the same uh, uh, soil type. Um, so we, we, we definitely can, can dig deep on this site, which is good for uh, planting perennial crops where you have deep-rooted uh, systems that need to have good water drainage. Drainage class is somewhat excessively drained. Um, that says to me um, we likely are going to need irrigation applied on here. Um, you can see some other things. Runoff class, uh, you know, the capacity uh, to transmit water. Um, you know, how quickly does water uh, move out of the soil? So there's a number of different characteristics. I won't go through every single one of these. Um, that is useful to give a quick idea, a good idea to kind of say a, a yes or no uh, to a particular site. So that's really all I wanted to cover on this quick tutorial. Uh, I recommend using the uh, web soil survey and looking at a few different pieces of land, uh, particularly pieces of land you might be familiar with and uh, use the survey, get a sense from your chair, from your computer, uh, about what the soil is going to tell you, and then get out and walk the field and see how that correlates. Uh, most times you can get a pretty good sense, uh, particularly about the, um, the, the drainage um, and the, uh, the bedrock, um, uh, the, 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 the distance to bedrock or other features that will allow you to kind of screen out a site in terms of whether it is a um, suitable or an unsuitable site. Um, sites that may not be farmland of statewide importance or um, other important farmlands don't necessarily mean they can't be farmed. It might just mean that you may need to apply irrigation um, or that you may need to use uh, some kind of tile drainage or otherwise uh, uh, moderate the site uh, to make it more amenable to your particular crop you're growing. So that's it. Uh, Terry Bradshaw signing off. Thanks for checking.